So hate is a very strong word, but I can guarantee you that at least my reason for hating these things in this video are good reasons. But before I dig too deep into that, first of all, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Michelle and I am a storyboard artist in the animation world. I've also recently published my first graphic novel, Mish the Bad Demon, and I also post personal comics on Instagram and my videos on YouTube. So I kind of have some level of involvement in somewhat broad range of fields in the art world, so I would say that the things that I'm talking about in this video are kind of consistent in not just one specific art field, but multiple. You know, it's the whole art community, and it's not just apparent only in the art community as well. These things are apparent in any other industry, community, or world that exists on this planet Earth. So the reason why I think it's important to call some of these things out is because as a young artist, you're very easily impressionable. And I think when we hear these things from adults, we start to believe them as truths and we're just accepting of this is just the way things are because so-and-so like dealt with this when they were young, which is not true. And that's why you should check out my video, the biggest art career mistake you can make because you should not be listening to outdated advice from people who are from a different generation and approach their art career in one way and it might not be applicable to you in this day and age of 2023. So if you're watching this in like 2050, yeah, this might not be applicable anymore. So the first thing that I absolutely hate about the art community in general is just tying an artist's identity to their art style. This could be yourself tying yourself to your own art style or doing that to somebody else. Either way, I don't think it's the healthiest thing to do. What I noticed when I was in school sometimes is that based on somebody's art style, if they were either at a skill level that was not as good as their peers or their style was like weirder or more amateur, usually they would be treated a lot more differently compared to peers who were like of similar skill level or similar style level. And you know, there are a lot of times too where I will say there are people who maybe don't have the greatest art style and they also have a really bad personality and they hurt others. Yeah, that makes sense to stay away from people like that. However, there are cases where there are people who just genuinely wanna build connections with others and they are a good person, a good acquaintance or connection to have, but people actively avoid people with art styles that don't really align with their tastes, which I feel like tends to really burn bridges unnecessarily just because somebody doesn't draw in the same way that you do. I will definitely say that this isn't really as apparent once I started working and you work with a lot of people of all different ranges of art styles, but I will say like in the initial beginning parts of starting art school, and even sometimes when I first started working, this was still kind of a thing, but thankfully I feel like I'm in a place right now where I'm not really surrounded by people like that anymore. There there were even times where I heard other people bashing another person, not even for their art, but their personality and who they are based on their art and their art style, which I think is like, again, unhealthy because probably the person who's doing that to the person is probably also viewing themselves closely with their art style, which is why they project that onto others. But I don't know. I don't know everyone's story, but I know I've been a victim of tying myself to my art and my style. So the next one that's going to be very apparent, especially when you're in college and graduating, is career jealousy. This is when you see your peers starting to get opportunities before you. Some of them might get promotions before you. It's really not all that different from just working a regular job, honestly. Even if you're not an artist, I'm pretty sure that people of other skill sets in their respective career paths feel the same way with their own peers. But it's not that different with the art world either. People do get jealous when they feel like, you know, why is everybody getting all of these internships, jobs, and what's wrong with my art style? And maybe with artists, you might have a little bit more sensitivity around it because your art is 
more personal to you. It's kind of a little bit more of an emotional thing. So when you get rejected for that or you don't get any acceptances because of that, it stings a little bit more. But I do genuinely feel like this comes from a scarcity mindset because you feel like things are just being taken away from you when really there's still going to be a lot of opportunities out there coming out at different times. So you just never know when one of those is gonna be yours. And I think to think that, you know, there were only five jobs only that were going to be released this year and that they're all taken, it does not mean that you're never gonna get your own job or your own project to work on just because in your mind you thought there was five when really it wasn't. I think it's also important to note that we only look at paths that have already been paved for us. So we only look at positions that exist because we watched movies and we know that these certain job titles out there exist when really there are also a lot of opportunities that just don't exist yet because they were meant to be created by you. Like you wouldn't be the face behind your own brand or your own company if you weren't the one that started it. And I think that artists should also be more encouraged to think about carving paths for themselves and not just taking ones that other people have proven to do already. But I will say if there's one thing to be jealous about in terms of other people's careers is people who have a stand desk. You don't mess with people who have stand desks because they are on another level. And that's why I would like to thank today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. So FlexiSpot is known for providing ergonomic solutions to your home office. And I'm really grateful to have been sent their Comhar standing desk earlier this year to try out. So this is the FlexiSpot Comhar Pro Standing Desk. And there are these buttons here on this side where when you press them, you can turn it into a stand desk. And also this desk has a sensor. So if there's anything beneath the desk, it will make sure it doesn't collide into it. It also has a really nice bamboo surface as well as this drawer that you can store things inside of. And there's also a little wireless charging port that will just charge your phone just like that. Using a stand desk in general is really good for your posture, but it's also just an option to have even when you're just living your life and having fun. Like my boyfriend and I have just been playing Sims a lot and creating our romanticized future mansion. And I've also talked about this OC10 chair in which the lumbar support, the cushion seat, and just these adjustable headrests and these adjustable armrests are in my opinion, unlike any other office chair I've personally had. So with that, I'm happy to announce that FlexiSpot is gonna have an anniversary sale from May 25th, in which the discount amount is as equal as their Black Friday sale. So I highly recommend you to check them out if you're trying to catch a good deal on some new office furniture that is more on the ergonomic side. You can also check out their website for other ergonomic office furniture that may better suit your needs and lifestyle. So thank you again to FlexiSpot for being a long-term sponsor of this channel and let's get back to the video. So this one is not so much like a problem that I feel like needs to be fixed. It's just more of a thing that exists that I hope just doesn't stay the way it is and will evolve over time. So for me, this one's a little bit more personal because I am an Asian American and this is just a trend I personally noticed lately with a lot of projects that are based on Asian American characters or backgrounds. So lately, I feel like there has been a lot of projects coming out about Asians or Asian Americans coming out with stories about, you know, immigrating to America or another country or sharing their generational trauma, which is fine. I love hearing stories about that. I myself would like to do a story like that someday with a future graphic novel. My only fear around this is that I feel like sometimes Asian American stories are only really appreciated if they are shared under this lens because I feel like there are some Asians or Asian Americans that wanna make stories totally irrelevant about you know coming to America or don't wanna talk about their Asian American identity and just wanna make a story about, I don't know, cats just existing in space or something. And I feel like those stories might not really ever have the light shined on them 
as much. Okay, maybe comparing cats in space and an immigration story is not comparable because they're totally different things and one subject might be a little bit more serious than the other. But my point is that I just want Asian Americans and Asians to get to a place where they can make stories about whatever it is that they want and not feel like they only have to share stories about immigrating to America or sharing their generational trauma as the only type of valid story they can share. And I do feel like we've been seeing a change in that, especially with movies like Everything Everywhere All at Once and Beef recently coming out on Netflix. I thought that these were great stories that just had nods to the Asian American heritage side of it without having it be like the whole story. I just don't want the entertainment and art industries to only choose these stories to curate from Asians, Asian Americans, and anybody of any sort of particular ethnic group, background, or community. So then moving on to the next one is the drawing pretty girls only trend, which is very apparent on Instagram where a lot of people kind of just base their brand off of only drawing pretty girls, which, you know, if you're able to build like your own business and brand off of doing that, I mean, go you. I think the only warning I would have about this, especially for young artists trying to improve their art, is when they get into a bad habit of only drawing like pretty women or pretty girls or, or just pretty and hot people in general. That's fine if that's what you wanna do, but I think with doing that, you just need to be aware to not have this be a crutch or a comfort zone thing, in which, yeah, it can be your comfort zone thing. and. You know, I've even been in a place myself where I didn't really like to draw things that were not pretty. I had a fear of making things look ugly because then maybe it wouldn't be considered good art when really it's more like the opposite where people can tell if all you're capable of is drawing pretty people and you can't really expand out of that. So I would just say if you're somebody who is really intrigued by all of these pretty illustrations of people or pretty girls to only proceed with caution because you just want to know that, hey, if you are going to be doing this, you're either consciously doing this to establish it as your brand or you're just doing it because you find enjoyment in it. And if so, just make sure it doesn't become your crutch and prevent you from learning to draw other things in life. So the next toxic thing is kind of a controversial one, but I feel like, but I feel like a lot of people are growing more aware about this lately, which is forcing or pressuring artists to turn their page into like a political page or something like that when that's not what their page was originally meant to do. So let me just get this straight, first of all. If there is an artist that does strongly believe in something that they want to share and support on their page, they are more than free to do so and you can do whatever you want with your own platforms. I just feel like it's when the audience, which tends to be like the community of artists that this artist is in, is pressuring this artist to start posting things about any of the trending political situations happening in this world. I myself hate using the word trending because I know that there are always problems ongoing and existing in this world. But I just noticed that whenever there's a trending event happening in this world, a lot of artists or even just people who have a presence online really start getting comments or messages asking, why don't you talk about this? Why aren't you talking about this? Blah, blah, blah. Pressuring them to do something that they either don't wanna do or they are not at a place where they are able or ready to share what they think about the situation just yet. And I feel like doing this often leads to a lot of misinformation being spread because a lot of people just end up being pressured into doing things and they don't have the proper amount of time to do the right research and they just share things just for the sake of sharing things more so than taking the time to understand what's really going on and thinking about what they can best do to help the situation. 
But I just think that this is something that some people need to learn to accept is that just because an artist either has a very strong following or a very strong community, just because they start sharing or talking about this one cause that they would like to support, it doesn't mean that their following count will exactly translate to the amount of support that they can give an outreach to and, you know, get like donations from. Sometimes it can even do the opposite if, you know, this art page is usually known for something and then they start sharing things that are not really consistent with what they usually talk about. A lot of people might end up unfollowing this person or not supporting this person anymore and then it leads to this artist like going downhill a little bit and then I don't know maybe this artist might get to a point where they're not able to really now support themselves and that totally destroys the point because now this artist can't even help the world because now they have to take care of themselves because there are a lot of artists out there that do solely rely on social media or the internet as their way of making an income or a living. I'm a pretty big believer in believing that people make their best contributions to this world when they are allowed and given the space to do what it is that they do best. Sometimes that might not be in the public eye and sometimes this might be better done privately for some people. And I do think that as artists, we were given this great gift of being able to evoke emotions and change people's minds with the things that we create. But sometimes those things that we create take time and sometimes those things that we create might not always be in alignment when a certain specific event or cause is just trending. But yeah, that's what I've got to say with that. But moving on to the last toxic thing that I hate that the art community sometimes does to other artists is shaming artists for making money. So this one I actually get really annoyed about because I've received a lot of comments about this myself, especially with promoting my first graphic novel when it came out, Mish the Bad Demon. I received some comments, especially on Instagram, saying things like, oh my gosh, all you do is just like promote your book and I'm gonna unfollow you now because that's just like all you ever do, which what am I supposed to do then? I feel like it's hard enough as it is being an artist because we are are already told that our careers don't make money, our careers are going to lead to one where we're starving and just end up homeless. But I feel like a lot of the reasons why art is not considered a valid career path is because it is stereotypically known to not make money when I feel like it's not really that true. I feel like it depends on how you're approaching your career, what ways you are searching to create income with your artwork. And that's going to vary from person to person based on their mindset, their habits, their position in life, and all of those things are going to determine how art will play out as a career in your life. And I just feel like the last thing that they need from other people is the lack of support to make money because money is gonna be one of the number one things for it to be really considered a career because that's how you're making a living and providing a roof over your head. And I feel like when people are shaming artists from providing their bare necessities with their artwork, it's just really upsetting, especially when even going to a major studio or working for a big company has already, has already had many cases where artists get easily taken advantage of and they lose ownership over their own work. And I just feel like we need to encourage more artists to take more ownership of their work, make money off of their own work, and gain more confidence from being an independent artist if that is something that they wanna do. So I feel like by receiving comments like these from other people who ironically also wanna do their own thing and also make a living off of their artwork, but they shame other artists from promoting their work and trying to make money off of their work, it's just, ridiculous to me because you know i think in a perfect world if we were all able to just make art and not make money off of it and we're all happy and living fine content successful lives without the need to make money i'm pretty sure a lot of us would but anyway sorry to end it on that note 
I hope that by watching this video, you learn about some of the things that you should not be accepting from either the art community or the art industry that you're working in and to try to challenge these thoughts, if anything, if you do believe in them. So if you personally feel like you got a lot of these beliefs, especially from maybe veteran artists that you looked up to when you were younger, I'd highly suggest you check out this video, The Biggest Art Career Mistake You Can Make, where I go a little bit deeper onto this topic. But otherwise, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one.